Greetings. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a film that's 40 years old and it won eight Academy Awards. And it truly is an, uh, a real phenomenal film. Um, it is Amadeus. Um, I saw this when I was a teenager at my grandparents' place. So the original cut, the, the, the 161 minute version. This is the three hour version. So, you know, 19 minutes have been put back in and uh, it's a fantastic film. You know, it's a uh, uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, as well as uh, the, the film is being told by uh, and. Antonio, I don't know, Antonio, I don't know why I just said Antonio, I, I'm, I'm okay, Antonio Salieri played by uh, F. Murray Abraham, while Mozart is played by Tom Holes, um, Elizabeth Barrage plays uh, his wife Constantine, and um, basically, you know, Salieri is jealous of Mozart and also, you know, late in life, he blamed himself for, like, having killed Mozart and he slayed his throat trying to kill himself as a result and uh, was put to a mental ward. And then throughout the film, he's telling this story to a priest. Um... The Emperor is played by Jeffrey Jones, who, you know, if you've seen Beetlejuice, you will know him as the, as the father. Uh, <laughs> uh, Catherine O'Hara's uh, husband and one of the writers, uh, dad. But, you know, all, 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 of, the, all of this is a truly excellent film. Um, this film is directed by Milos Forman, uh, director of One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, and is produced by Saul Zanz, who, per who helped produce One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. So they teamed up again for this film. Um, yeah, he... Yeah, Salieri, you know, when he sees Mozart for the first time, he's just like immature horny guy who likes fart jokes and other things and just just immature and yet he makes some of the best music around at the time and it's just so fantastic and amazing and he's unable to reconcile like what, what how is this ha possible you know, he's like, I, I, when I was a kid, I prayed to God that he make me the, you know, like best composer like ever. And uh, basically, it, his wish was granted. And he was, you know, he, he was able to become an incredible composer. But Mozart comes along and, you know, at the age of four, he wrote his first... <laughs> Like symphony, symphony, and it's just you know his talent just keeps growing, and like you know, and his, his wife says, you know, you know, when he wrote music, he never wrote, he never made copies; they're all originals. And uh, you know, he kind of like has a he's upset with God, like you know, God chose Mozart to be like the greatest composer, and not him it's like god's mocking him by making this guy have so much talent and yet essentially in, in various ways you could say he could be a buffoon you know body impish mozart you know that's what it's said on the back here which would be very <laughs> accurate um now obviously you know you know this film is based off of a play that was also you know so therefore you know let's not completely 100% accurate. 
in various aspects. Though, for the most part, the whole Mozart stuff, what you see, is fairly faithful, you know, about his life and how he lived and how, you know, he would be with some women and drink heavily and, but he didn't love his wife and his son. Um, and he was a genius, but he was very com uh, obsessive and composed. Like, you gotta have it completely right. Yeah, every single, you know, note he wrote, he could hear it in his head. So then he would just write it down, write down what the notes are. And, uh, this is just an amazing film on so many levels. Um, the cast is excellent. Um. Yeah, here it says, like, one of eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture. It deserved that. You know, Best Director, Milo Schwarman. Best Adapted Screenplay, Paul Schaefer from his play. Best Actor, F. Murray Abraham. And then also Best Art Direction, Set Direction, uh, Costume Design, Makeup, and Sound. The only one, I think, that should have gone to someone else would be best actor that should have in my opinion tom holtz should have won i just i've always found since the first time i watched this movie to now that his performance was just truly phenomenal um i mean not that f marie abrahams is it because it is uh, the acting in this film is truly stellar so if you watch this and if anything else uh, i think you will be able to at least appreciate the acting as well as the look of the film, the period and all that stuff. Looks really good. Um, um, the music is good too, though. I know not everybody enjoys classical music, so... It could be an acquired taste, uh, uh, perhaps, so... Obviously keep that in mind for a film about Mozart and Salieri, but... Um, if that's not a problem, you should be able to enjoy this film if you haven't seen it before. And, uh, yeah. But, and one thing that's... I, I, I When I heard this, I thought, well, that's truly impressive. Um, and not that this is, helps ensure that he should have won the Oscar, but I think, if anything, that really just shows the commitment that Tom Holtz had. Where, where they, you know, they, there was a scene where they're going to a party... And, you know, he's playing the little piano there, and then he's put upside down, and he he plays it upside down, and then he also does it like that. And he's not looking at the keys or anything. And, and, and Tom Hulse actually learned how to do that for the film. That is just astonishing. I don't know how many people would do that, but, uh, like, learn how to do that. You know, usually all that stuff is dubbed over by uh, from what i've read uh the music you hear being played is actually tom holes playing the piano a little piano upside down like that so like he learned how to do that you know uh, i'm sure he had piano lessons uh, at least prior to this film so he was at least familiar with it so that way for the most part with whenever you see him you know play the piano they would no doubt dub it, but for that scene, they actually kept it in, because he learned how to do that for that scene, and it's truly fan uh, fantastic. It also just shows how committed he was uh, to the film um, and the role. <clears throat> um, at one point, this film was going to be played by British uh, actors and actresses, and... Um, and his autobiography, it was his autobiography, not just a biography, but Kenneth Brenner said that he was actually looked at to play Mozart until the until Milo Schwarman decided he wanted to have an American cast instead. Um, and now, something that's interesting, and of course I'm a big fan of <laughs> franchise he's in, uh, Mark Hamill actually went to audition to play Mozart because... He, for the like a Broadway Broadway run uh, of the eighties, um, Mark Hamill actually uh, took over for T 
Tim Curry, once he his time was done and he left to do other things, you know, he played Mozart on stage for uh, many performances, and he was lauded. He was, uh, you know, acclaimed. You know, that's something that Mark Hamill did after the Star Wars trilogy ended. For the most part, he just did stage work. Fortunately, uh, for film, he managed to just do a lot of bad sci-fi stuff. Like, you know, oh, he was in Star Wars, so here's here's Luke Skywalker. <laughs> and in part of that, uh, him being Luke Skywalker actually cost him uh, being able to audition more. I, I believe he auditioned like once. Um, and then there's like maybe stories and stuff like like one is like you know the head of the studio that was gonna you know back this film heard his name was auditioning to like Mozart and he said like, I don't want Luke Skywalker in my movie you know so even if Mark Hamill was actually at least at that point early on one of the best people who came in and read and you know auditioned for Mozart. Um, his being in Star Wars uh, was against him in that way. And Milos Forman even said, look, you, you know, you're Luke Skywalker. You're They, they will never let me uh, <clears throat> cast you. Like, like, even if he thought he, he generally was excellent and deserved to come back for multiple auditions to see truly whether or not he could prevail and play the part... Or if somebody like you know, Tom Hulse was overall better. I think it's unfortunate he wasn't able to truly have an actual fair chance. Because, yeah, I get it. You know, there might be some people who, you know, you know see Mark Hamill and think, Ah, oh, sci-fi, that's what the movie's going to be. And so when they, if they see a film like this, be disappointed. Be like, there weren't lasers or anything, but boo. <laughs> Um, hopefully most people of that time would actually have been able to uh, know that uh, what what, the, what Amadeus would mean um, uh, at least to some extent but I mean that happens sometimes people are associated with a certain character from a very popular film or franchise and so because of that, they get certain uh, uh, parts they go out for, you know, they don't get. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. I, I mean, um, if Mark Hamill got this part, you know, would that have done a huge, uh, been a huge thing for his career? You know, especially if he did well? Probably. Um, of course, we'll never know uh, whether he would have been nominated for an Academy Award, like Tom Hulse, you know, is, we won't know either. Um, but yeah, um, I just really wanted to highlight this film because it's an excellent movie, 40 years old. Truly a, a, a fantastic film. Um, one I think that is definitely worth watching. Um, at least once. You know, if you haven't seen this film, uh, you know, this is the director's cut. And I think for the most part, that's really what you can really find fairly easily out there. Um, I know there was a version with that that had the soundtrack also. That was kind of like a digi book, so... I didn't get that because uh, whenever I saw that, it was way more expensive than it probably should have been. Of course, I saw that at Barnes & Noble. And also looking up like on Amazon or some other website just didn't dawn on me. Uh, around the time I got this, this came in, was released in 2009. Which was probably around the time I got, you know, 2009, 2010. Um... I think what kind of took me a while to actually get this version, which obviously the same contents except, you know, minus the uh, CD and uh, the, the digi book, you know, all the pictures and little notes inside of that, uh, what will come with that 
you know. Um, but, you know, all the contents are the same, you know, commentary, the making of Amadeus documentary and the trailer, you know, all that is still on there. So it wasn't like overall, you're missing a whole lot, but, um, yeah, I just thought that, you know, wanted to see whether or not as time went on, if, if that kind of bigger one would actually uh, decrease in price it didn't so I thought I'll just get this it was more affordable I don't remember how much this was but it was uh, I just remember the other one was kind of ridiculously priced though again Barnes and Noble sometimes they do uh, charge more you know for some of the films and stuff they have so or they carry so I didn't think it was worth it uh, for me at least but hey you know not everybody is me but sometimes you just gotta manage your money as well as possible and I'm pretty happy just to have this film and the director's cut at that um, but yeah the director's cut was released in 2001 so yeah, I haven't seen the theatrical cut in years, but uh, I remember I enjoyed that, and I really enjoyed this cut. It's a, a fantastic film. Uh, uh, excellent performances and story, and yeah. So yeah, anyway, uh, what do you all think if you've seen this film? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? agree with all the uh, awards it received do you think it should have won more are you kind of like me you think that tom holes perhaps gave a better performance than that he should have won the oscar and again i have nothing against f murray abraham won because it's one of those things where both were equally deserving it's just i think just whenever i've watched it that tom holes just is just that much better like a like a hair better but that's me i could be alone <laughs> or maybe there's some people who are you know who think like me i don't know i know awards don't mean a whole lot but uh in this case you know the, the awards for the most part primarily you know they got it right they for this year in 1984 you know there was this film phenomenal film there's the killing uh, the Killing Fields, yeah. So Once Upon a Time in America, which I need to get the four-hour version, except that's out of print, and um, that's 40 years old now, and they should have a 4K out this year. So I've seen on places like eBay uh, every so often, like the, the Once Upon a Time in America comes up here and there. Um you know, of course, the theatrical cut that came out here in America was badly edited, and just people were like, "Oh, this is appalling." Of course, later on they had they put in a lot more scenes, so it was in like over three hours, and then they then had like the four hour version, which I am hoping will be out this year sometime for four K. Um, cause, uh, I have the three hour plus version on DVD. Fantastic. Love to see the four hour version, but yeah. 1984 was an incredible year for films. Like, which is just those three alone are uh, stellar, uh, films. But yeah, once upon a time in America, unfortunately kind of got screwed because of the studio cutting it up. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I have no problem with all the awards this film received. Truly an excellent film. Uh, what do you, again, what do you think? Like it, dislike it, and all that stuff. Kind of repeating myself now, so I'm going to shut up and get going. Oh, and this version is rated R for brief nudity. Yeah. The yeah, theatrical cut's rated PG. Um, but yeah anyway 
Uh, yeah. I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all having a great day. Hope you're all having a great week and a great weekend. And it is May. Hope your May is going well. Hope your year has been going well, too. So, yeah. See you all next time. Please take care. Goodbye.